Hello, my name is Eileen Meyer, and I'm here to answer a few questions for you about Coyopa and the Coyopa process. Now, I have been working with Mayan Ochki, Eduardo Griego Gonzalez, since 2001. And I walked the Mayan fire path with Eduardo uh, back in end of 2001 and into 2002. And uh, we went to Guatemala together, and um, that was an extraordinary experience where um, I had, I received a lot of validation and confirmation um, that the Mayan wisdom was um, in resonant harmony uh, with a lot of the wisdom that I was receiving uh, through my experiences um, with non-human intelligence uh, over the years, over my lifetime, as a matter of fact. So uh, with that, um, it's, it's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to continue working with Eduardo. And um, I'd like to just dig in now and answer some of your questions. So the question is, uh, what is Coyopa? Um, there, I have two answers to this. I have uh, my own direct experience of uh, this bioenergetic event in the body. Uh, and then I have definitions, uh, both from the Sanskrit word Kundalini and the Coyopa word, uh, you know, Coyopa from the Mayan Kiiche language. Coyopa is that uh, energy that is described, as I, as I mentioned before, um, that's like Kundalini, that we would associate with Kundalini. Um, but with Coyopa, there is, um, there is the extra added definition in the Mayan Kiiche glossary um, or dictionary um, that once this opening occurs, um, there is a you know, reconnection with the cosmos, uh, what I like to call coming back online uh, with the cosmos, uh, our natural state. Um, and then um, the, the beginning of receiving uh, direct messages uh, from the cosmos from, in other words, from the field or from uh, all that we are, um, but we had disconnected from that in order to fit within the smaller parameters uh, or bandwidth of um, this reality, this 3D reality. In this truth-telling process and in, in learning how to tell the truth um, because truth has a resonance and when you speak it out loud with Coyopa um, you're hearing the truth um, really what Coyopa is uh, is um, is attuning the body speaking the truth hearing it out loud helps the attunement process um, this is all about sound, truth, innocence, resonance. So once um, these openings are created, and um, at some point I'll, I'll, I'll do an overview of this um, whole process, um, but once the, the practice uh, begins and there is the, the dedicated attention to it, you will probably start to notice, um, especially if you're doing, uh, you know, the hummingbird breath um, that Eduardo guides us through, um, you'll probably start to notice um, that your breath uh, deepens. You're able to bring more oxygen into your body and it's not something that you have to force. It just kind of kicks in and, and especially when you're in that zone 
uh, or flow of connectedness um, with the field, with source, uh, with the cosmos, whatever you like to call it. Um, when you feel that lock in, that's usually when the breath kicks in. And I, I can't even reproduce it in, in my you know, normal uh, alert state, uh, left brain state, basically, that I'm speaking from now. Um, but when I'm practicing it, uh, it will kick in and I can breathe very deeply and for a very extended amount of time. And it's almost uncanny when I listen to recordings later, like, that's me breathing? So this is uh, indicative of not just some special thing that happens to me. This is our natural state. So uh, and this is basically the Koyopa process is, is the practice of, um, you know, re-identifying with our natural state. So breathing, feeling that flow, uh, feeling openings and spaces uh, that weren't there before. Um, but that's because we're uh, feeling and stating what we feel truthfully. The closer we can come to the statements of very clear, authentic, sacred truth-telling, the quicker this is going to happen for you. If we're lying to ourselves, um, then we are disconnected. If we're telling the truth in very basic levels and begin to expand that and in truth telling and sacred truth telling, it heals us, opens the spaces for this musical instrument to begin to play more of who we are and then join the cosmic symphony. And this is where we get the messages, the communication, um, from non-human intelligence, from angels, from source, uh, that comes in the form of resonance or music. It doesn't necessarily come in words. We learn how, that's like an, the next phase, is we learn how to translate uh, energetic or frequency data. So um, that's uh, just a little bit about um, some of what you would be uh, feeling and to let you know that you're, you know, making progress. So that's an interesting question. Um, what is the goal? Um, I have never been goal oriented in um, my spiritual uh, path. Um, there is no goal. Uh, there is only the longing, uh, the interest um, in reconnecting, remembering, restoring, re-identifying with the truth of who we are. And uh, so there are things um, that are absolutely necessary, uh, not only in preparation for the Koyopa experience, um, but also uh, just to, you know, really discover, is this really what you want to do? Uh, I have found in the past that there have been um, people who want to engage in this way and want to awaken. They say they want to awaken and they want to reconnect with the cosmos and the rest of their consciousness. And then as soon as some of these energies start to rise, um, they're, they're gone. They're, you just won't hear from them again. They're done. Because once it becomes real uh, in a physical way, um, this is when we find out um, how much we're in relationship with an idea of awakening uh, versus our actual um, choice uh, to uh, awaken and then to uh, further evolve and further open to our original source creator. So some people might say that, um, you know, you need to... Uh, to watch what you eat, you need to watch what you think, you know, your thoughts. Um, 
we need to be good. Um, it's, it really is kind of the opposite of all of that. If you sit down and make this commitment to reconnect to the truth of who you are, um, I guarantee you 100% that once this flip or this reversal takes place, you automatically eat. You're drawn to what is good for you to eat. Um, you're automatically in balance and speak from a balanced place. There's no, everything that we have done up to this point in our lives, um, you know, and, and then generation after generation has been some form of um, making it or forcing it to happen in the outer world first and then forcing it on the body and the spiritual being in this direction. It's actually the, uh, the opposite. We um, show up uh, time after time after time to um, demonstrate that we are uh, dedicated to this connection. Um, and then when this uh, dedication essentially pays off, um, and it will, if we're being uh, truthful, um, then uh, all of those things just naturally fall into place. We don't, you don't have to think about it. We're so accustomed to thinking about everything and analyzing everything um, as an outer world experience or event. Um, this is the reversal. This is when you come back online um, everything just flows from that source energy, um, including all that you need to know. Um, at, at any point in time, you can apply these uh, Koyopa processes and quickly get to a space of uh, knowing what you need to know. Um, so, and there's a lot more <laughs> uh, benefits, of course, um, but that's, uh, that's pretty much the response to that question. Uh, you know, the answer to that question is, is it takes as long as it takes. Um, this is a little bit related to what I just said uh, about, you know, your level of dedication and attention. All it, all it is, is attention. Um, if you are willing to give this your attention, um, you're not even going to care about how long it takes to start to, uh, you know, feel something move or shifts or changes within you or uh, within your perspective. Um, you may find that the more attention you bring to it, um, the more dreams you have at night. Then if you pay attention to those dreams and work with those dreams, um, you know, your subconscious, the unconscious goes, oh, she's, she's really interested. Um, so let's give her some more. Let's give her some more. So it's a dance. Um, and if you're attached to how long it takes um, and that has meaning to you or, or you're, you, you're trying to put it into a schedule, um, then um, it might take longer <laughs> is all I have to say about that. Um, but once you start to feel the, um, the movement, um, the breath, uh, the, the locking in of, of this connectedness, um, it's, a, it's a very real feeling. And you can start to experience this before, you know, a full flow or full understanding occurs. So you're, you're just always... Um, this is, this is about honesty and innocence. So it's about, um, it's more about letting go and saying, I don't know anything and I'm willing to play with this. I'm willing to engage with this. I'm willing to trust this. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, you will, uh, if you're dedicated, you will start to feel and experience things. Um, it could be, you know, the very first time you do it. And then maybe it'll back off for the next several times, or maybe it'll back off for three months or six months. Uh, sometimes uh, there's a, it, it's not a test. It's more like how, how much do you really want this? Or is this another thing that is cool to try 
and cool to talk about. Um, but then eventually something more cool comes along. Um, so this is, this, this is a dance. This is definitely a dance and it's a, it's a beautiful dance. Okay, so you're probably not going to feel it the first time. Um, and a lot of people, the, 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 and I just want to caution you, the ego will step in and say, this isn't working. I'm not going to waste my time with this anymore. You have to be able to identify the frequency of the ego so that you know when it steps in and says, this is ridiculous because it will especially when you start telling the truth especially when you're sitting there and you're answering the question what are you feeling now what are you feeling now do you know that some people report to me that they it freaked them out just to tell the truth all alone in their house nobody else is around and it freaked them out to tell the truth that shows you the distance between who you are and who you're pretending to be. We must be our whole authentic selves before we can connect, reconnect with the cosmos. So again, there is no timeline. You're either dedicated to it or you're not. Or maybe there is another practice for you uh, that's better for you. I'm not saying this works for everybody. I actually think this is a, um, a fun question. Um, this one, and I think it's the next question too. I, uh, it makes me smile. Um, once you feel it flowing and you are connected to these, your hearing, feeling, guidance and messages, um, you, you don't need anyone, me or anyone else to tell you what happens next. You are connected. You know now. Okay, this one makes me laugh too. Um, I sure hope you don't go back to normal after you practice this. <laughs> um, but I think I know what you mean. Um, if you are having these expansive experiences, um, just understand that you're, it's, it's stretching you and it's helping you to remember and re-identify with your universal or cosmic self. So um, you don't want to go backwards to uh, what you identified with before, which is normal. So you are um, allowing the universe to, uh, to speak to you to transform you and to take you further and further and further into um, this multi-dimensional, expanded, natural way of being. So we are returning or restoring our natural state and normal is, is not something um, that you want to um, necessarily feel again. But um, you should not be um, off balance in any way by going to these expanded states. Um, it, will, it, will, um, it will just take a few moments to come back to reorienting in, in where you know, your feet on the floor and, um, and then bridging to uh, persons, places, and things. Uh, in your reality in new ways. So you'll go through an integration process where if you, if you do some pretty big expansive 
um, connections and feelings and you really hit that, that flow and that zone, um, you may have, uh, you know, a full Koyopa experience, which um, I did in 1998. Now that took me years to integrate. But those were different times. We're, we're now at the threshold in between worlds and the energies have all flooded in from the center of our galaxy to say, all right, everybody, let's do this. So it's, it's a different time. So I, it's like comparing apples to oranges really um, with when I experienced the full um, rise uh, of Koyopa. Um, or as this, the Sanskrit term is Kundalini, the rise of, of the full Kundalini experience where it changes your brain, it changes the relationship um, with yourself in, in massive ways and with the cosmos. Um, so there are varying degrees of this, um, but always, always you don't want to push it to have this grand experience. You don't want that to happen before you're ready, in other words. You know, how I relate to this question is um, sometimes there are visions, there are downloads uh, of, there's a lot of data that comes in and um, probably about nine times out of 10, it's not in context of where you are now. So um, at future points in time, when context changes in your reality, uh, when you change and your context changes, um, sometimes these um, visions come back in and say, um, yes, remember you were shown this, uh, and this is how it relates to what you're seeing now. So um, these openings are, are not time oriented. So you will find that um, the data will come back in uh, when it's resonant uh, for that moment that you're in. Um, and, and, or, or you'll just say, oh, now I get it. Oh, you'll have like revelations of that's what that vision meant. That's what that data meant. Uh, now I see how it fits in to my life and my understanding. So keep the questions coming. Um, I will be doing a video uh, probably with uh, Eduardo uh, in, in demonstrating the Coyopa process um, in the coming days or weeks. Um, so meanwhile, um, happy Coyopa practicing and um, I look forward to hearing how you are doing. Bye now.